Hello ladies and gents, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna give my thoughts about today's quarterfinal matches. It's my reaction video. I'm gonna talk a little bit about these four clay court matches we saw at Madrid Masters. And I'm gonna give you a semi-final preview also about the two matches we're gonna see tomorrow between Dominic Thiem and Sasha Zverev and Matteo Berrettini against Kasper Ruud. To begin, of course, I'm going to start with Sasha Zverev's, Alexander Sasha Zverev's defeat against the clay court machine, the clay court beast, Rafael Nadal. He took out Rafael Nadal in two straight sets, 6-4, 6-4. It was his third consecutive victory against Rafael Nadal and um, how did Ra uh, Rafael Nadal lose this match because he barely loses on clay court and today on this fast clay court surface of Madrid we have seen Rafael Nadal get defeated a couple of times through the history and today he lost because he didn't win enough points on his first serves and he didn't return that well, mostly due to, to Rafa's uh, opponent's consistent serving in this match. And Rafael Nadal, when the ball was in play, he didn't create too much winners. He only made six winners in, the, in this match, four from, his, uh, four from his forehand and two from his backhand. And that is enough, not enough on this level. Shasha is not that kind of a terrible player that you will uh, get away with that kind of uh, numbers so Rafael Nadal's backhand looked very fragile today it wasn't the normal uh, solid backhand we have seen before Rafa moved okay in court like he always does but Shasha Zverev just played an amazing sets of tennis uh, two sets of tennis in, in, in this battle and won this battle fair and square he his huge serve got rewarded in this uh, match and he gets rewarded on on this um, um, fast surface because he has won he won this Masters in 2018 it was his first ever Masters win he I think it was here in Madrid where he won uh, and it was against Dominic Team so. What can I say? A little bit about the stat. How do you beat Rafael Nadal? You beat like Zverev did today. You have to have a superb serving. Bomb serves. You have to step into the court. You have to dictate the point with powerful ground strokes from both wings. Uh, because Rafa will read your game. And if and the third thing. You, you, you are not going to play passive against Rafa Nadal. You have to take time from Rafa. You have to play hyper-aggressive tennis to defeat Rafa on clay. Um, and, and the other surfaces too, of course. So, superb serving. Step into the court with uh, and dictate the game with power for ground strokes. And um, not be pa passive and take time from Rafa. Then you will get mostly rewarded and maybe win the match. Because Rafa... We have seen him through this tournament. He hasn't looked that super in super shape, uh, but he has done his job. He has looking rock solid in his two first rounds, and today he met an opponent that has this huge firepower, that has this hard hitting ground strokes that take times away from him. And of course, uh, he's ser he served greatly in this match. Alexander Shasha has very he won. 82% of his first serve seen and 43% of his second serve seen. On the other hand, Rafa only won 62% of his first serves in and 50 in his second serve. So that's not usually high numbers for Rafa. Uh, and um, Shasha returned well in this match. He won 42% of the returns the, 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 in, in Rafa's service points. And Rafa only managed to win 33%. So that was the number that... Uh, it said it says all because if you look at the points uh, the points up to five under five shots uh, Alexander won 39 points and if you count the points from nine to nine the rallies between nine to uh, five, five to nine rallies um, Shasha won 
22 of them. So the when the ball was in play, if the ball was in the play more than nine shots, uh, Shasha Zverev won 61 of those points, and that's huge. Rafa had only the better stats in the points uh, uh, if if the uh, from nine and up when they played. So. All in all, great numbers for Shasha Zverev. He made a tremendous effort today and he deserved his place, deserves his place in the semi-final. And who is going to meet there? Of course, it's Dominic Team who beat Jon Isner 3-6-6-3-6-4. Dominic's team got um, a great... Um, he didn't have a great start. He lost the first set when Isner broke him. But when, it, but when you play against uh, Isner, one break if you break his serve once it you will have the biggest chance to win the, the that set because he's not a great uh, returner uh Jon isner the, the tall american dude the serve cannon the serve boost that had ace in his pocket he only managed to serve 18 aces in this match dominic team won 79 percent of his first serves in and 56 percent of his second serves in isner's numbers were 77 percent on the first serve and 55% of the second serve. So, uh, Dominic team, uh, but by this time, and he wasn't hesitant because when the ball is in play, who is the better baseline player of the, these two guys? Who is the most, uh, who has the most firepower? If, of course, it's Dominic team. He hit through um, Jon Isner, he, he made him run for his money, he dictated the game like. I expected, like everybody expected. So without uh, his serve, he wasn't that a, a big threat for Dominic team. And uh, he only managed to take care of one out of uh, seven breakpoint opportuni opportunities, um, Jon Isner, and that was in the first set. Uh, and um, Dominic team won two out of four breakpoints that he had in Isner serve, and that was just enough because. If you look at the stats, if you have watched the game, Dominic team was just a little better on the returns and served a little bit better. He won more percentage in his first serves in when his first serves one is in play, and that's why he won this match. It was a tight match, even though this third set was that exciting. So the number says it all here. Also, Rafa only had two break points in Rafa in Shasha's serve in this match, and that was in the first set. In the second set, he didn't have the he didn't see any breakpoint opportunities because Ra, Rafa's opponent Shasha Zverev was just rock solid there. All right, the third match is between was between Kasperud and Bublik, Norwegian sensation. The clay court uh, player has reached now I think three Masters semifinals at clay. He also won huge numbers on his both first and second serve scene, but that was mostly due to Bublik's poor returning. Kasper's first serve was okay, but his second serve he got a little bit too much free points from the Kazakh, the ca the guy from Kazakhstan, the light version of Nick Kyrgios. Kasper won 76% of his first serve scene, 75% of his second serve scene, and Bublik won 70% of his first serve scene and only 29% of his sec second serve. And that's, I think, where he lost the match. Because uh, in his uh, returning game, um, the Norwegian guy, Rude, won 44% of total of Bublik's uh, servings. And that was not good numbers. And 76% of his own serves. And Bublik only managed to win 24% of his uh Sir, no, he, he returned only, he won only 24% on uh, Roots serve, so that was not great numbers. But he has done an okay tournament, uh, Bublik. He shouldn't be ashamed of himself, but today he just met a better player, a rock solid clay court player in name of in, in the uh, in this round. And I think that uh, Rude, I know that I knew that he was gonna reach deep. I, I thought that he, with a decent draw, he will reach at least a quarter. And he has done that now. He's in the semifinals. He's going to take on Matteo Berrettini, 
who was a set down against uh, Garim. He won f- uh, five, seven, six, three, and Bagel, the Chilean, Chile, Chilean dude in the first set, six zero. He won eighty percent of his first when his first was in his first serve was in, and forty two percent of his second serves, and managed to create 14 aces. Garin, on the other hand, started out great in the first set. His serve percentage numbers were high, but in, this, in set two and set three, he, the number dipped, and he only won 65% of his first serves in and 44 of his second serves. So, the first two sets were exciting. We had a, a long game in the beginning of the first set. I think the second game was around 10 or 15 minutes, and that was the that was that game set the outcome of the first set, third set, which Berrettini, when he broke him, he was comfortable and it wasn't walk in the park in the third set. It was just on. Um, he played solid tennis. I watched that game also. He played good, solid tennis. He has a great forehand. So the battle between him and Rude is going to be an exciting. They've met three times before. Kasper is up 2 1. He won at French Open against him. And uh, Berrettini has defeated him at US Open, so this is going to be a tough battle. I think this match will go to three sets. In the long run, I think that Berrettini will win and uh, be in his first Masters final, I think. But it's a tough call here. I give 55% to Berrettini and 45% to Norwegian. I will definitely not be surprised if Kasper Rud takes out and managed to defeat Berrettini because what does he do best this Norwegian dude he plays consistent tennis from the baseline he moves great on court he has a great forehand he has a great serve he has great shot making skills he knows how to take the ball early he's not afraid to take chances mostly he's a safe player a grinder but when the opportunity comes he strikes same for Berrettini, he likes to go around with his forehand, he likes to hit that flat forehand, he likes to put pressure on his opponent, he plays fast with fast pace, he doesn't give his opponent so much time. On on his backhand, that's where his weakness is. If 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 Rude can attack his backhand, he will have a great chance of winning. And of course, he has to hold his serve and take care of his break point, break point opportunities against Berrettini because he was he, he doesn't let his serve down that that easy right uh, my prediction is that Berrettini goes through the this semi-final battle and the other match is between two young not youngsters but two rock solid players they have met each other 10 times before we know that team has the upper hand he's up 8-2 Zverev won uh, the Madrid Masters final against Dominic Team when he won his maiden Masters here. So this surface really suited R- uh, Shasha's game. So and then he won against uh, Dominic Team at Beijing, but uh, Dominic Team has defeated uh, Shasha at the US Open final. He has defeated him at French Open. He has defeated him at Australian Open. So three times in Grand Slam. So Dominic Thiem really has his number. He really knows how to play against his one of his best friends, Alexander Shasha Zverev. And um, due to his absence for two months, Dominic Thiem is looking good. He's looking solid. But against uh, Shasha, he has to play different. And we know that in this match, I think that Shasha has the upper hand because due to the fast serve, he, he will try to attack team and not give him time but when team is in the zone when he hits those huge uh, ground strokes from his back and then forehand with that kind of firepower is hot it's going to be hard for Shasha to resist but Shasha's uh, defense play has really impressed me the, la- the the last couple of months he played good defensive tennis uh, due to his big size He's a tall guy. He moves great on court to be a tall guy. If he can keep his first serve numbers in, if his second serve doesn't click, if he takes cares and doesn't choke or do something unexpected when he has the match in his hand, I think that 
Shasha will win this match because it, it it's really this also is a very tough battle. It's gonna it's gonna be a close call. It, it won't surprise me if this match ends in two sets, straight sets for either of these guys, or it goes to a fifth set, a, a third set. But if this match goes to a tie break, I think that Dominic Tim will be the stronger dude in that section. But I think that Ra uh, why do I say Rafa all the time? I mean Shasha Zverev. I think that uh, he knows that this this is the his best chance of winning a big Clayco tournament and that's in Madrid. And Rafa's performance I have, I forgot to mention one thing. Um this tournament is not an indication of course of how Rafa is going to play at French Open. We all know that French Open the higher ba ball bounce uh what he have achieved there, it's a total different melody, guys. It's a five set tournament. Rafa is vulnerable in three sets tournament. You can actually defeat him if you have a good day at work, at the office, like we say. And Shasha had a great day at the office today. He did his job. He wasn't. He was focused and determined from the beginning. I knew that when he played the first couple of games, that Rafa is gonna have to dig deep to take him out. And Tim is the one of the guys that can dig deep because due to his firepower. But if he returns his serve like he did return Isner's serve today, he has a chance to take his team into Shasha's serve. And Dominic Tim have a secret weapon. We all know that his second serve, his kick serve, is a, a joy for the eye to watch when he hits those wide when he hits that kicks are wide and it just bounces up like two meters up. Uh, that's his secret weapon. He can always rely on that. He can rely on his firepower. He can rely on his head to head, his mental um, um, mental edge here also. But I think that Shasha will win this match. It's going to be a tough and close call. So I think that Berrettini will play against Zverev in the final, and will it if it, it will be the opposite? It has surprise. It won't surprise me because these matches are very hard to predict. But since I'm a vlogger, I have to say, put my opinion on the table, and I this is my opinion: Zverev and Berrettini in the final on Sunday at Madrid Masters. All right, folks. Thanks you. Thank you for watching this video. Take care and bye bye.